So tonight I had a little bit of spare time, thought it might be fun to work on the Ford 800 series tractor project that I have going on. Specifically, trying to sort out some of the issues with the wheels on this thing. Like a lot of old tractors, none of them are really all that salvageable. I bought two new rims and of course tires and everything else for the front. For the back, I bought one new rim, and the reason for that is because we can take these two rims and make one good one out of the two of them. The problem these have is the problem that rims on a lot of old farm equipment has, and they always rot out right around the valve stem here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out this bad spot. We're gonna cut out a, um, a replacement section out of the, if you can believe it, in worse shape donor rim that we have here, and then weld this in place. This is an old school technology. It's not something that I've ever, I've ever personally done before, but uh, it's a way that farmers have for many generations gotten more life out of crusty old wheels like these. Now as a little bit of a disclaimer, this is not something that I would recommend for anything that actually goes over the road like you know your pickup or whatever. Compared to that, you know, if, if, you, if you have an old pickup that you're working on, odds are you can go to whatever junkyard or whatever if you just have the old steel wheels like these and you can buy a new one there on Craigslist for uh, next to nothing. Farm equipment is of course a little bit different. Uh, it doesn't go 70 miles an hour so you don't have the liability there of a repair like this failing at high speed. The other thing is uh, replacement wheels, they are for a lot of things very few and far between. You figure there's a lot more of an average model car made than an average model tractor. And a single rear replacement rim, especially on larger equipment, can cost between hundreds to thousands of dollars each. So you can see why it makes sense to repair these if possible. First thing we're gonna do is find the best spot on this rim, which I believe is this area right in here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and clean this up, um, and of course this one too. Now all this scale on here we will remove with the needle scaler, and then all the light stuff that's left behind after that will wire wheel off real nice. What's up, homie? We heard you enjoy hearing loss. So I used the needle scaler to pop off all those big nasty cancerous rust chunks and uh, now after wire wheeling this thing I think we're finally ready to start making a plan of where to cut. We use a square and the old silver pencil and we want to cut approximately here. I know this is not an ideal layout technique but doing the best I can here with what we got. And let's see we will cut about an inch or so past the last hole because the rust really doesn't seem to be spreading that much on this rim. And we're gonna cut four inches deep. And play connect the damage. Now the easy and the quick and dirty way to do this would be to take our patch and put it right back here and just weld it in place. But the reason why I don't want to do this is you can see this patch and the original rim are now at two different heights and the problem with this is that it's going to create a situation which runs the risk of putting uneven wear on our inner tube and even possibly wearing through somewhere in this area. So what I'm going to do, take my silver streak and... Now we're going to plasma cut this right on the line so it should fit in here with a tiny little gap which is of course where we'll weld.
right, so we got some paint drying and basically once I got these things welded in place, I took an angle grinder with a flap disc on it, I believe I used a 40 grit disc and that's what I used to remove most of the, uh, the bulk of material that was above the surface of those welds. And then I used a die grinder with a sanding pad to smooth things out the rest of the way so we're positive nothing's going to be chafing against our inner tube. And uh, from there, coated everything pretty heavily with a couple coats of brown, you know, rusty metal, you know, brownish red primer. From there, I put some uh, rubberized undercoating on the inside of the rim where it's going to contact the tube just as a little bit of added insurance. Painted the outside silver to match the new rim we got. And I will say, I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. Like I said, this is not a repair I'd ever attempted to before, but I do remember when I first got into welding way back in the day, uh, so to speak, of course. Uh, well, this is actually one of the repairs that I wanted to learn how to do so I could do for myself when I'm trying to fix up old machinery like this. So like I said, uh, it turned out a lot smoother than I thought that it would, and I'm really happy with the way this project turned out, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it. As always, friendly reminder, link to a bunch of the tools and gear and all sorts of stuff I use in these videos in the description below. And thanks for watching, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more.